Hello again. Welcome to part four of our beginning Python video series. Uh, this is going to look at for loops. Uh, this is our first loop that we've done. I would say it's possibly the most ubiquitous, the most common, uh, the one that you're going to be reaching for most often when you're programming. Uh, very, very useful, very, very helpful. Uh, it takes the laborious, repeated work uh, that programming can be, and it turns it, rather than doing the same thing over and over and over again, you put it into a loop, everything is taken care of. This is where some a lot of the power of programming comes from, is from loops, and uh, in particular, for loops as well. But, before we talk about for loops, we have to talk about lists, and we have to talk about, in particular, the range function. What is the range function? Ooh, you don't know? What do we do? We check the reference. Uh, so I have here, when I get my mouse back, uh, Python range function. Create a sequence of numbers from 0 to 5 and print each item in the sequence. And as you can see here, it's created a variable and used the range function to make that. And then that's printed out. You can try that. That's sitting there. It's in the reference. You can see what that shows. Let's do it. Oh, you can take me to a new page. Okay, there. We've just run that program and it's gone 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's made a list of numbers from 0 to 5. You wanted to 6. What's happening? It's not inclusive. There's 6 things in it, but it doesn't include 6 itself. You will get this wrong. I get this wrong all the time. The range function does not include the number you put in it. Okay, but the range function returns a sequence of numbers, a list of numbers, starting from zero by default and increments by one by default and stops before a specified number. And here's the syntax. Start, stop, step. Okay, what is start? Uh, an integer number specifying which position to start. It's, it's a starting point, it's fine, it's a starting point. Uh, and your stopping point is required. So it's where your list is going to stop, right? Not including that number. And your step is optional, an integer number specifying the incrementation. Oh my God, there's such big words for it. It's the number of steps you take as you go. Okay, let's give you some examples. You really need to get comfortable with the range function before you try to get comfortable with for loops, okay? So let's go print. Let's say range. Uh, let's do the same example that we did before. Print range six. Oh my goodness. Oh, are you really going to do that to me, Python? Yes, you are. What if I do this? That's better, okay. <laughs> if I put list with it, it's actually going to give what uh, the range function turns into. It's not just gonna print me out the range function. Okay, this is what uh, the range function is turning into. It's turning into a list, square brackets. Okay, square brackets, list. It's turning into a list, starting at zero, going zero, one, two, three, four, five. Cool. What if I went range 26? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 25. Stopping at 25. So, I could start at a different number, I can stop at a different number, and I can go up by a different amount each time. Uh, so what if I wanted to, whoops, where's the right tab? Ah, that's from my last triangle question, go away. Um, so what if I wanted to start at 11 and go up to 26? Oh, great. So it included 11 and then went all the way up to 25. What if I wanted to 
go up to 25, but only include the evens. Eleven, thirteen, five, six, seventeen, nineteen. Oh my goodness! Eleven, thirteen, fifteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty-one. Own going up into each time. What if I wanted to go up in five each times? I'm going to count from fifty to one hundred, going up in fives each time. Nice. There we go. A list. Fifty. 55, 60, stopping at 95, because 100 itself isn't included. But if I turn that to 101, well, now it is. Cool. That's the range function. You will be doing it. <gasps> Ooh, what if I go negative one? What happens? It's going to break. Why? Because these numbers are the wrong way around. If I said uh, 100 and went down to 50, what would happen? There we go. Now I'm counting backwards. We can do that. Why not? We can count backwards. We uh, <laughs> count backwards to 51, of course, because 50 itself, again, is not included. That's the range function. You'll get used to this over time. You'll almost, well, you'll quite often be using a for loop with the range function in Python, okay? Right. Let's take a look at our exercises. These will seem reasonably quick and simple, uh, so we might combine a few questions together today, uh, but the trick is to do lots of it often. Write a program to print out the numbers from 17 to 25. You might think, oh, I know how to do that with our range function now. So if I go, I want a for loop. There is something that I want to do for each number uh, in that list. For In what list? Um, Uh, uh, for what list? Uh, 17. And we're going to go to 26 because it said uh, up to 25. We want to include that in our question. So this is the syntax. 4x, or actually, you know what? I'm going to, rather than maths land, let's live in code land. For i in range. What is i? i stands for index. For index in range 17 to 26. Do what? Print i. So what's going to happen? We're in this for loop. The first number that i becomes is 17. i is going to become 17. Then we're going to print it. We're going to go around in that loop again. We're going to go around that loop again. I is going to go up to 18, we're going to print it. And what's going to happen, it's going to go 19, we're going to print it all the way to 25, and then we're going to stop. So this isn't printing out the list like we did before. This is printing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, however many times, and looping that statement, that print statement, changing what I is each time. Uh, cool. Let's do the same thing, but with the even numbers from 20 to 50. We know how to do that. So we're including 20, and we want to go to 50, so I'm going to put 51 in there. And we're going to make our step 2. So we're going to go up 2 each time. How do we do that? Well, the range function takes care of all of that for us. The rest of it is all noise. Look at that. So what's happening here? The range function is making a list of numbers. And then our for loop is going one by one through that list of numbers. In fact, I'm going to make that list of numbers and show it to you because it's really crucial to separate out that difference. 
the range function makes a list of numbers, the for loop goes over that list. So here we go on our first line, and that is just one line, it's just wrapping through. Our first line, there is a list of numbers there. Square brackets, it's a list. 20, 22, 24, 26. That's the power of the range function. The range function has done that. Then our for loop is going over that list and doing something with each of those numbers. It's coming through, it's printing 20. Next cycle in the loop. It's coming through, it's printing 22. Next cycle in the loop, it's coming through, it's printing 24. And it's looping and looping. The for loop is looping over that list there. Range function makes the list. For loop does something with the list. I think that's plenty for the moment. Uh, we will power on through a few more of those quick little uh, exercises next video. See you there.